You're listening to the Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 37. I'm your host, Victoria Wellsby, and today we're talking about the fear of judgment. And I'm afraid people will judge me, and we're going to talk about that and see if we can make you feel a little bit better. Okay, let's do it. You're listening to the Fierce Fatty Podcast. I'm Victoria Wellsby, TEDx speaker, best-selling author, and fat activist. I have transformed my life from hating my body with desperately low self-esteem to being a courageous and confident fierce fatty who loves every inch of this jelly. Society teaches us living in a fat body is bad, but what if we spent less time, money, and energy on the pursuit of thinness and instead focused on the things that actually matter, like if pineapple on pizza should be outlawed, or if the mullet was the greatest haircut of the 20th century. So, how do you stop negative beliefs about your fat body controlling your life? It's the Fierce Fatty Podcast. Let's begin. Welcome, welcome, Fierce Fatty. How are you doing? I'm so pleased that you're hanging out with me today for another episode of the Fierce Fatty podcast, episode 37. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? So excited. I uh, When I started the podcast um, a few months ago, is it a few months ago? No, Jesus Christ, like we're in J- June, July. What? <laughs> Anyway, 37 weeks ago, so one month ago, um, 37 weeks ago, um, I my goal was to do one podcast episode for every single week of the year, and I'm doing it. I'm doing it every single week. We've got a podcast episode out to you. So I'm feeling pretty, uh, pretty proud of myself. No big deal. Um, yeah. And I got to say a big thank you to everyone who has written a review for me. Um, if you write me a review and before you post it, take a screenshot of it. And so wherever you can write a review for the podcast, take a screenshot and send the screenshot to Victoria at fiercefatty.com. I will send you a free copy of my book called Fierce Fatty and, and, um, a digital copy and an audio copy as well. Uh, So one of the most recent reviews I got was from Beth and Beth gave me five stars and Beth said, her confidence is contagious um, and says, I've been doing the deep work of recovering from decades of trauma and every type of eating disorder. By chance, I stumbled upon Victoria's podcast recently and it's a treasure trove of truth, wisdom, advice, encouragement and therapy. Thank you, Victoria, for being so dedicated to spreading the anti-diet, body-positive gospel. You are genuine, vulnerable, and your accent is the cherry on top. Thank you, Beth. It's it's funny how so often people mention my accent. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I wonder if British people think my accent is... is They probably don't. They're probably like, why are you talking so North American? Um, anyway, so um, another review um, I got here from Tezneem, who says the title of it is Yes Mate. <laughs> Five stars. This podcast is, uh, is awesome and is one of the things that I actually look forward to listening to. I can always rely on an episode of the Fierce Valley podcast to give me the extra boost of confidence and spunkiness because Victoria is that cool friend who cheers you on and tells you that you can do it. But with enough sass, banter and sarcasm that it's not cheesy. Also, I love Victoria's mocking voice when describing ridiculous scenarios, LOL. <laughs> I don't think in mocking voice as in me being rude, but you know, when people are like, oh my God, just, I need some dust. I think that's what Tessie was talking about. Um, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, don't judge me. I'm not a bad person, which is what we're talking about in today's episode is that fear of judgment and um, hands up if you fear that others will judge me, judge you. Yes. And I had a Freudian step there, judge me. Yes, my hand is up. Um, of course, I am a human being, uh, if you didn't know, 
and I too have fears that people would judge me. But I have learned to, for the most part, when I get those fears being like, ah, tell them to fuck off, you know, I haven't got time for that. I could die any day now. Who gives a shit? So um, uh, in this episode, we're going to go over that and see if we can uh, make your gorgeous fat brain fit a little bit, uh, a little bit better around the fear of judgment. And a reminder that I have a brand new little something, something for you. And that is the Fierce Fatty Body Love Roadmap. And uh, you can get that by going to the episode show notes or going to fiercefatty.com forward slash zero three seven for episode 37 if you ever want to go to the podcast um and you've forgotten like what episode number you can just go fiercefatty.com forward slash podcast and that is going to get you to the podcast um yeah and then you can scroll down and see whatever episodes you want and also hey join my facebook group the one that i've been keeping secret from you (laughs) Fierce Fatty Friends, you can just go Fierce Fatty Friends in Facebook, just type that in or go to the link in the show notes. And um, yeah, you have to answer three questions to join because I want to make sure we don't have like a bunch of creeps or whatever. Because it's a good a good way to screen out people who are like, um, you know, just want to come in and be like boobs or whatever. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so answer those three questions. If you don't answer those three questions, I will not be able to admit you into the Fierce Fatty Friends Facebook group. So make sure you do, and then uh, we'll let you join the party, right? Okay, today what I'm going to be covering is why we are afraid of being judged, why it's not helpful, and how to reframe fears of judgment so that you can live your damn life and not be constantly worried about what people think about you. So uh, that is what we are talking about today. Now, why we're afraid of judgment? Well, if you're a human being, then uh, is a part of your, your nature, is a part of our nature to be afraid of judgment. Um, The reason being that um, if we are judged, then the consequences could be really grave. So here's what I'm talking about. Um, Imagine hundreds and thousands of years ago, we were living in our small communities and we had to hone the skill of making judgments about other human beings to understand if they were safe or if they were an enemy and so if we're in a community and another human approaches we have to be really good at judging someone quickly Um, and if they're safe then we can let them in if they're like us if they look like us if they behave like us they're allowed into our community now once you're in a community we need community to survive as human beings we're social creatures right um, if your community judges you negatively the consequences is that you are booted out of the community you are ostracized and as humans we die without that community. It makes us very hard. It ma- makes it very hard for us to survive, especially hundreds and thousands of years ago, um, when we had to survive in those. We need those communities to, to literally live and get our food and warmth and love and all that type of stuff. Now, now in our modern day, we still have that deep fear that if we are judged, the consequences are potential death and so why would you not be afraid of being judged whereas now the the reality is that we probably won't die if we're judged (laughs) but it is useful for us as humans to keep that that fear alive but just a little bit right we don't need to have it so activated that we fear that if we if we wear a crop top then everyone's going to be like, oh my God, you need to be removed from the human race. Oh my God. Um, Because that's not really the reality, right? Um, 
So everyone experiences this, even if you are super confident, even if you have lower self-esteem, everyone in some way fears being judged because it's just part of the human experience. Now, how much that affects you is different for every person. And a lot of the times when you do have a lower self-esteem or you're not happy with your body, that fear of being judged can be a lot higher versus for someone who feels comfortable in their body and they know that they're worthy. So why it's not helpful to be so afraid of people judging us? Well, it's a losing game, right? Um, no, because no matter who you are, or what you do, people are always going to judge you. I don't know if that's news to you, but <laughs> you're always going to be judged. Um, and we don't want to fall into this habit or this pattern of changing ourselves or not living our authentic life for fear of what others think because this is what it's like, right? Um, imagine if you uh, had a, a child and they come home from school and they said, um, I'm being bullied because um, I have big ears or whatever, for example. So I'm being bullied because I have big ears. Now, would you say to that child, well, you know what child? That bully's right, yeah. You do have big ears and actually, do you know what? I think we should do something about it. I think that you should always wear a hat or you should, um, in fact, let's get surgery to, to reduce your ear size or, or whatever. That is not going to be your first response when uh, someone, a child says that they are being bullied. You're going to say, it's not cool that the bully is bullying for someone um, because they are different. Now, a lot of the times, unfortunately, when it comes to having a fat body, we are told, well, you should listen to the bully. Maybe you should lose weight, then you won't get bullied. Versus saying, um, the bully needs to change their behavior. You don't need to change your body, body the bully needs to change their behavior. Um, so in some ways we can recognize that it's not okay to pander to um, what a bully wants from us. But in other ways, when it comes to living in a fat body, we're like, well, I should become thin. Then I won't stand out. I should conform in whatever way. Then I won't stand out. Then I won't be bullied. Versus people who are judging others need to fucking stop, <laughs> right? Which is what needs to happen. Um, so what's the alternative? What really, what is the alternative? Hide forever, never be your real self, never express yourself in ways that are authentic to you. Um, do you want to always be really vanilla, really milk, you know, really milk toast, be a smaller person, um, in all the different ways that you could be just so someone that you went to school with on Facebook doesn't notice that you look a bit different. Do you want to be 80 years old and think, you know what? Chad never did, you know, comment that I'd put on weight. I'm so pleased that I lived my whole life being smaller, not showing the world who I am, uh, doing all these things to fit in because Chad, that knob that I used to go with to school with um, all those years ago, he was never offended by my appearance. He never saw a picture of me on Facebook and said, oh my God, she looks fat. I'm so pleased I lived all of my 80 years of my life or however you're gonna live, um, not offending Chad or you know whoever it is that you're worried about um, their judgment. Fuck Chad. Fucking he can suck my dangling tits. I don't care if Chad thinks that I have put on weight or if what I'm wearing is not okay or if my hair looks shit or whatever. Um, I'm not going to live my life for Chad or Karen or anyone who is, is judging me in that way. Um, so 
What is the solution? Well, something that has brought me comfort. This might not bring you comfort. <laughs> I mentioned it before, but you're always going to be judged, okay? Positively and negatively. No matter what you do, you're always going to be judged. And there's something that someone told me, I, I can't remember who told me, but this is, this is years ago and it's really stuck with me that in life, 10% of people will love you. 10% of people will hate you. And 80% are gonna be somewhere in the middle. You know, they think, yeah, you're all right. Or, oh yeah, you were that person I met one time, you know, or just don't even think about you that much. And so no matter what you do, there's always going to be people being like, yes, you're amazing, you're awesome, you're great. And there's always going to be people like, I can't believe that you're wearing that. Oh my God, have you put on weight? Oh my God, there's always going to be people like that. So do you want to be judged, knowing that you will be judged, do you want to be judged for a fake version of you? Or do you want to be judged for an authentic version of you? So you can, if you want, play small, constantly diet, try and fit in and not stand out in any way that you know you, you, that you want. You can do that, absolutely. Um, but what consequences does that have for you, for your happiness, for your self-esteem? What consequences does that have for those around you? What consequences does it have for the world? Do we need more people who are shrinking themselves, who are who are making themselves more palatable for consumption by others? Do we need more of that in the world? No, we don't need more of that in the world. We need more people who are like, yeah, I might be a little bit different. Yeah, I might be fat. I might be a little bit fat or a medium fat or a, or a super fat person. And I'm going to go out in the world and, you know, fuck what other people think um and as well thinking about you know 10 percent will love you 10 percent will hate you do you want the people who love you to be those who love you for a inauthentic version of you or do you want those 10 percent of people in the world who you come across that love you to be loving the real radical messy authentic version of you right i used to surround myself with people who um i would be such a people pleaser and i would pander to them and i would be very non-offensive and you know if they said they didn't like something i would change it and um those who loved me loved me for a version of me that wasn't real because really i wanted to be myself and when i did become myself and was loud and proud some of those people i lost some loved it and was like oh well you know i love this 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 newer version of you where you are you know more yourself uh so and it's more it's more it's, more, it's beautiful when you know that someone loves you and cares for you and thinks that you're cool um for exactly who you are like warts and all because none of us are perfect perfect people right um yeah so in this let's think of a scenario you're walking down the street and someone is judging you so imagine if you i don't know you're walking down the street you think okay i'm going to wear a crop top for the first time or i'm going to wear something which is really form-fitting or i'm going to do my hair in a way that is different or i'm going to put on those false eyelashes or whatever it is that is making you feel a little bit self-conscious so imagine if someone judges you so think about this, like, do you know them? Are they going to be thinking about you a day from now? You know, are they going to be like, oh my God, I saw a person on the street and they were wearing a crop top and it was really inappropriate or it was really horrible or whatever. A day from now, are they going to be thinking about that? Or is it just a fleeting judgment? A week from now, are they going to be thinking about you? And if they are, does it matter? Do you know these people? Is it going to have an impact on your life? Is them approving of you or not approving of you 
going to change your self-worth, your inherent self-worth as a human being. Your self-worth is, is unchangeable, right? No matter what you do, who you are, what you wear, how much you weigh, you have worth as a human being. We all do. And so if that one person is judging you negatively on the street, some random stranger, does that have an impact on your self-worth as a human being? No. It can feel like it, right? It can feel like it if someone is like, oh, look at you, you're whatever. It can feel like you know our our worth is is diminished but that's not actually the reality also think about it this way you presuming because we don't know what they're thinking right unless they are a complete knob and they're like whoa fat person or whatever if you think that you see someone looking at you or looking at you in a weird way or whatever um you presume that they are thinking something negative okay what you're doing is passing a judgment on them you are judging them you are judging you are presuming that they are there looking at you thinking negative things about you how do you know this you don't you're making a negative judgment about them so you're hoping you don't want other people to have negative judgments about you where you're, you're in that moment. If you're thinking, presuming that they're having a negative judgment about you, you're judging them. <laughs> you are doing the exact thing that you don't want others to do to you. Um, and you're projecting your own judgment upon them. Whereas they could just be sat there being like, oh, there's a person. Oh, it's a nice day today. Oh, I really need to do a poo or whatever right and and you've projected onto them that they are like oh look at that person oh they're so fat or oh they're so whatever and it might not be based in reality so notice your own judgments and when you judge others because we all judge all the time, even though, you know, sometimes you like to think, oh, I'm, I'm above that. But that's not true. Um, notice your own judgments and how long they last. So when you see someone different and you make a quick judgment about them, are you thinking about that person later that day or a week later? You know, are you telling your friends, oh my God, I saw someone with this weird haircut in the mall two months ago. It was hilarious. No, your friends would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You, it won't even be in your brain because you notice someone with a weird haircut and you're just like, oh, there's someone with a weird haircut, not a haircut that I would have, but you know, whatever. And then it's gone from your head. Or maybe you might think about it again another time, but you know, a week or two weeks or a year later you're not going to be like oh yeah i remember that one person with a weird haircut it's just we, it's useless information right and so if someone is judging you and they're like oh my god look, there's a fat person you know 10 minutes later they're probably just like oh i really fancy an ice cream or oh what am i gonna have for dinner right um so when when i did my um my tedx talk if you don't know, I have a TEDx talk. It's amazing. You should go check it out. Um, when I did my TEDx talk, uh, it was a big thing, right? So I was speaking on stage in front of 2,600 people and then it was going to be filmed. It was filmed and then it was going to be put onto the internet. Um, I listed out the worst case scenarios of what could go wrong, like in regards to um, people judging me and so i thought okay well i could forget my words well if i forget my words can i survive that yeah you know that's okay i've seen other people forget their words and um i know that had someone had forgotten their words um at a, at a ted talk at that same venue a couple of years before and, and what they did was they edited out all the bits that she forgot in the video and um 
then when they put it on the video online no one could tell the people in the audience were like cheering her on and being like you can remember and she managed to get her notes and blah 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 so 2600 people in the audience might have been like oh it would have been better if she had remembered her words or whatever they thought but on the internet which is where the real big audience were they had no idea and so now my tedx talk i think has 140,000 views so if i had forgotten my words um 2600 people who were in the live audience would have noticed but the majority of people who saw my talk or see my talk 140,000 people would never have known i didn't forget my words but um that was something that i thought okay what is a, a bad thing that could happen another bad thing that could happen was uh maybe i'll burst into tears and run off the stage I don't know why, but, um, you know, that could happen. I could just run off the stage and be like, I can't do this. Um, could I survive that? Yes, I could survive that. I wouldn't have a TED talk, but, you know, maybe I could try again. It could be a learning experience. Um, but the absolute worst thing I could think of, like the absolute worst thing that I could think of is what if I shit myself on stage? That is the worst thing, like the worst outcome that I could have thought of for my, you know, outcome of me doing my TEDx talk. So what if I did shit myself? Well, I would be really embarrassed. <laughs> the audience would have been like, what the fuck is going on? And I would have had to I don't know, shuffle off stage or pretend it didn't happen or something. I don't know. But could I survive if I shit myself on a TEDx stage and have 2,600 people watch me shitting myself? And maybe then it would be put on the internet and have people watching me shit myself. Could I survive? Yeah, probably. I could probably survive. And what would happen is that after I'd got over the embarrassment and the awful feelings and all that type of jazz what i would be left with would be a hilarious story about that one time i tried to do a tedx talk tedx talk and then i shit my pants on stage it would be great it'd probably be more uh, impactful in, for my life <laughs> than actually doing my tedx talk right uh, it would make my life more colourful and interesting and yes, it would be awful, but um, I would also receive a ton of compassion from, from others and and of course, yes, I'd get judgments and yes, there might be pictures of me on the internet being like, LOL, this girl shit herself on, on stage or whatever. Um, but I would survive and it would be fine in the end, it would be fine. And people would forget about it. But I didn't shit myself. The TEDx talk went almost perfectly. Um, so think about what you're, you're afraid of when you're afraid of people judging you. What is the worst outcome? Like, are you worried that you're going to walk down the street and then like a gang of, of teenage boys are going to be like, oh my God, LOL, you're so fat. Oh my God, there's a fat person. Look at them walking around all fat. Like, is that your worst fear? No, like, is your worst fear that you're going to be wearing like a crop top and short shorts and then you fall over and, you know, a crowd of people are, are surrounding you and laughing at you? Like, is that your worst fear? So what is your worst fear when it comes to the fear of judgment? Is it that you, you fear that everyone's going to see you being a fat person and be like oh my god i can't ever talk to that fat person Ooh, disgusting i don't want to associate with them like what is your fear what is your actual worst fear and could you survive that is there any benefits to that like could that make you stronger maybe not you know maybe it would just be a terrible experience uh, I'm not saying that you know every shitty thing has to be something that you grow from but um do you think you could survive? Do you think you could live? Can you balance out the pros and cons of um, being your authentic self and living in the world in a way that is true to you versus the risk that that most terrible thing that you're afraid of could happen and people could judge you? Like what is more important for you to live authentically or to... Um, 
minimize any risk that anyone could judge you negatively um and those things could happen absolutely you could you know fall over and then have a gang of teenage boys like being like oh you're so fat and disgusting or i don't know that could happen it's probably not gonna happen but it could but if it did can you survive probably right something that brene brown says that i just absolutely love and it really resonates with me is that shame cannot survive the light so self-compassion dissolves shame and judgment okay so what is it that you are afraid of speak that out tell people and you know that that shame that you're feeling around how people could be judging your body like i'm afraid people could be looking at my legs or my arms or that you know thinking that they are that i'm horrible or whatever just speaking that out even just to yourself um or journaling journaling on it and giving yourself compassion it will dissolve a lot of that shame that you are feeling so here's an example. So uh, recently, maybe a month ago, I was in this this group discussion, um, like a, a group of us were, were talking about overcoming um, coronavirus and, and dealing with like the upheaval in our lives and whatnot. And um, we did like 12 weeks of meeting every week. Anyway, so I, I'm like a, I, I think quickly and I'm able to talk quite quickly and obviously I'm not shy and so whenever it'd be a group discussion and it'd be like okay so what do people think about this one topic immediately I would always know what I wanted to say and other people would would not want to speak and would kind of hold back and so I'd always be like well, I'm ready to go if you know no one else you know i'd always hold back a little bit to see if anyone else wanted to go first but often i'd be the first one to talk and so you know after i'd speak i'd be like they all hate me you know i'm i was i was you know thinking they all hate me they think that i'm bossy they think that i'm overtaking the discussion and it's all about me and i'm not uh, gracious enough to let someone go first and i was sitting there not listening to what the other people were saying because i was thinking oh my god they all you know they all hate me and so at the end of it i said hey you know because we're doing like wrapping up of the of the discussion and whatnot I said hey i you know i just want to share something that that i'm feeling is that uh i had this judgment that uh that i i, I presumed that all of you hate me because um, I speak first. And as soon as I said it, I was just like, <laughs> this is silly, right? This is like, really? And even before people were like, well, no, that's not true. Just by speaking it and saying it that, hey, I'm worried that you're judging me. I'm judging you, judging me. I'm judging that you're judging me, but you're probably not judging me anyway and a lot of people were like actually no we love it that you go first because it gives us time to think and um we we need more time to process and things like that um yeah not that i would always go first but you know i'd be one of the first and so that fear was dissolved just by speaking it even before people reassured me and said no we like you you know speaking up um just by speaking it and being vulnerable thinking oh, i think you will hate me and uh it kind of dissolved it so can you speak it that fear that 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 fear of judgment what you are really afraid of to yourself to others and see if it dissolves and have faith in humanity just a little bit just because you know sometimes we can't have faith in humanity but have faith in humanity a little bit because yes of course there are total knobs in the world that are going to be like lol a fat person um but more and more in society we are realizing that laughing at people who are different or judging people who are different isn't cool really like um i used to be an adjunct professor at the uh, university of british columbia in, in canada so i'd be teaching 
you know, 19, 20 year olds, 21 year olds. And their perspective on the world was so uplifting and incredible and inclusive and so different from what I was like when I was at university. I was just like, mm, you know, fucking whatever. <laughs> but they, they were, you know, sensitive towards social justice issues. And so that is a world that is that is is coming up. And not obviously not all of them, but so many of them that I was just like, whoa, you know, young people are cool. Like I want them to be my friends. Um, and even, you know, older people too. So, you know, Simon Cowell on Americans Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent or whatever. Simon Cowell, he's been he's been doing this stuff for years, right? Do you remember or you might not remember, but in his earlier days, he would be the one that when someone who came on stage who looked different, he would be smirking and laughing and being like, well, this person is going to be shit because they didn't fit the stereotype of what a pop star would look like. And um, then he had to eat his words many a times when actually the person who looked a bit different had an incredible talent. Like one person that I'm thinking about is Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle was a, I think she was Welsh, um, but she was on, I think, Britain's Got Talent or a show like that. So she she is an older woman kind of um you know mumsy you know gray perm that type of thing and and her personality is more um she has autism um at the time we didn't know that she just came across as a little bit more quirky or shy or whatever anyway and she you know simon cow is like a famous clip of simon cow being like oh, well pff, she's gonna be shit and look at her sort of thing and given her eye rolls and then she sings um i dreamed a dream from les mis and then everyone was like holy shit she can sing and so Simon Cowell used to be like that. And I've been watching America's Got Talent recently and he is the opposite. Every time someone comes out and they say, you know, I can't do this. I've been told that I can't sing because I'm fat or I, I've been told that I can't do this thing because my body is different or I look di I, I, uh, I'm, I'm different in some way. Simon Cowell is always says, we don't do that here and we don't judge people by what they look like and i've seen him say it like almost every episode and i'm like simon cow you have changed your tune and the reason is because it's not cool to shame people for being different anymore now not everyone has got that memo obviously not everyone has got that memo but a lot of people have and so have a bit of faith in humanity that you know not everyone if you walk down the street and you look different not everyone is going to be like, holy fucking shit, that, look at that disgusting person, you know? Most people are probably not, right? Or probably thinking, cool, it's nice to see some diversity. Uh, there's this thing that, that I, I wish I could find like the original thing, but it's, it's like a, a sentiment or, you know, a quote that I've remembered for years that I, I thought was kind of funny. Um, and I can't find the original one. So this is me butchering this, this idea. But um, the idea is that uh, in your 20s, you worry about people judging you. In your 30s, you don't care that people are judging you. And in your 40s, you realize that they were never really thinking about you in the first place. And I love that because it's so fucking true, right? <laughs> It's so true, like not necessarily the timeline, but really that people aren't necessarily thinking about us as much as we think they're thinking about us. Well, of course, we think that people are spending 24 hours a day thinking about, you know, what we're doing with our lives. But really, it's probably just a fleeting moment, if at all. Uh, and we're all in our own heads. So we're walking down the street and someone looks at us funny and we're thinking, oh, my God, what are they thinking? Are they judging me? Oh, my God, do they think that I look horrible or whatever? And that same person is walking down the street and they see you and maybe you look funny at them because they happen to look funny at you. And they're thinking, oh, my God, what is my hair look shit today? I've got something on my face. What's wrong with me? And you're both, you know, both of us are just like, oh, my God, does the other person think that I look awful? Do they hate me? And we're just having the same fear. And, you know, most people are not even thinking about you. Sorry to break it to you. I know I, I can't handle it. I want people to be thinking about me all the time. Um, <laughs> but... The reality is people are not necessarily thinking about you or judging you as much 
as you might believe. So a way to come over this, overcome this, is to personally try to stop judging as much. Now I know that's hard and being judgmental is it, it's a normal thing, right? It's a part of us as humans. We need to judge others to see if they are a part of our community, if they are safe. We have to look at someone, say if you're walking down the street and it's a dark alley and you see someone walking towards you, you need to judge them quickly to know are they safe? Am I going to get mugged? You know, whatever, right? And so forgive yourself for the fact that you are judgmental. We are all, all judgmental. Um, we have to be. But our level of judgment, we can try and tamper it down a little bit. So something that I've noticed is the most judgmental people that, um, that I've known in my life are also the ones that presume everyone is thinking awful things about them all the time because they're thinking bad things about others all the time and so they're like well if i'm thinking shit things about people then they must be thinking the same about me but it doesn't work like that because not everyone is super judgmental a lot of people try to work on being a better person and if you're here then i know that that's you like you obviously are not uh, are striving to not judge people for being in a fat body and all that type of jazz um so keep working on that and keep doing the good stuff that you're doing there to try and um it, decrease the amount that you judge and when you're noticing that you're judging trying to grab that so if you if you're looking at someone being like oh their hair looks shit or whatever it is that you're thinking trying to catch that thought and being like okay so what's going on here why am i uh having that thought how is this this thought serving me what is going on here and um trying to show that person some compassion um of what their life could be like and what you know what is going on with them and is them having a haircut that you've decided is a little bit different um something that defines them as a person and just explore it right so the next thing is to practice doing the things that you think that you're going to get judged for okay so whatever it is that you think that you're going to get judged for the only way to overcome that is to do it and see what happens so the first time is going to be uncomfortable it's going to be weird you know say the example of wearing a crop top or whatever wearing a crop top and then you know even just feeling the breeze on your belly you'll be like what this is weird it will feel uncomfortable and walking by someone you're going to be thinking what that what are they thinking they're thinking this is really inappropriate blah 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 but then the more that you're exposed to doing that the more you'll realize that you're just walking around and no one is really saying anything it's not that big of a deal and if they do then they're a knob um, so the more you do it, the more normal it's going to be and the less that you're going to be in your head thinking, oh my God, they're thinking this, they're thinking this, they're thinking this. So if you want to do something new in your life, like love your fat body or stop talking about diets um, and you don't because you're worried about what your family is going to think, what your loved ones, what they're going to say and how they're judging you. I challenge you to challenge that judgment that you're making about them. Um, a lot of times we think, oh yeah, <clears throat> our family, I know what they're like. If I come in and say, hey, can we stop talking about diets? They're going to be like, no, I love dieting. Screw you. And they could do that. Um, but we don't know until we try it, right? We don't know. Um, you know, if you went to your loved ones and you said, hey, I've hated my body my whole life I've dieted and it's not worked and so I'm going to try something new I'm going to try to work on loving my body and to stop dieting because it's not helpful for me can you help me out and not talk about dieting in front of me now most loved ones will try to understand where you're coming from um, and to to help you with this new request you know most most people will because most people are not monsters right however some will not 
because they've known you as a certain way for your whole life potentially and you saying oh i'm gonna change it all up and do something different it's it's threatening for them inherently right um so if someone that you love is judging you vocally expressing their negative judgments judgments about you then you can't stop that right we can't stop people thinking what they're thinking if only we could <laughs> I'm constantly being like, I wish I could just just jump into your brain and change the way that you're thinking. But it doesn't work like that, right? Um, so we can't change the way that they're behaving or thinking. But what we can do, what we can control is the way that we respond, the way that we uh, take care of our mental health. And so if a loved one is like, oh, you're so fat and horrible and oh, you should go on a diet and all that type of stuff, um, then you need to do something so that doing something could be um, setting a boundary with them. Uh, it could be uh, minimizing contact with them. It could be doing something to protect your mental health. So not saying anything or going to a different room or putting your headphones in or whatever. And it could be ending the relationship with them. It could be any of those things, right? Um, so you can't control how other people judge you. You can only control how you respond to those judgments, which sucks. I know, I know, I know. Why can't we can mind control others? It's so annoying. Um, so you have control in the way that you respond to judgments. So what are you going to do? Are you going to um, minimize contact with them? Are you gonna set a boundary and say, hey, we don't talk about that in front of me? Are you going to protect your mental health in different ways? Um, are you going to cut them from your life? All options, okay? So in a nutshell, in a nutshell, people will judge you i know i know i'm sorry people will judge you but not nearly as much as you think because most people in the world strive to be better human beings not all of them but a big chunk judgments mean nothing about you and your core value as a human would you rather be a vanilla version of yourself, a quieter, a, 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 a smaller version of yourself so that when you're 80 years old, you can look back and be like, I'm so pleased people judged me less because I pretended to be a different version of myself. Or do you want to be the 80 year old with the pink mohawk and the don't give a fuck attitude. Because you have that decision, you have that choice right now. You see on the, inter I see on the internet all the time, people, you know, there'd be, be a cool picture of a granny, like with a pink mohawk or whatever. And people are like, I, I want to be like that when I'm older. And I always think, why don't you be like that now? Like, why do you have to wait until you're, you know, older to be like, I don't give a fuck what you think about me. Why, why is it that you have to wait? Because you might not ever get there. And when you get there, why do you presume that when you get old, all of a sudden, the way that you've behaved your whole life on all the fears of judgments um, that you've held and, and not worked on are just going to suddenly dissolve? Guess what? They won't. <laughs> you have to do it now to be able to be that I don't give a fuck old person who, you know, shaves their head and rides a motorcycle or whatever it is that you want to do, you know, or just like gives a finger to diet culture. Um, so if you're like, oh, yeah, you know, like goals of when I get get older, why not goals of what you're doing right now? Right? Right? So I hope that was helpful um in changing your beliefs and your fears around judgment and you know judgment's always going to be that fear fear of judgment so judgment's always going to be there and fear of judgment's always going to be there because you are a what human being but the way that you respond to it can can change and you can become more uh it can be easier to tolerate when you know that fear of people's judgments and if people ever say shit to you 
honestly so if someone would say to me before like my biggest fear is someone would be like you're fat uh and if someone ever did say oh you're fat i'd be like oh my god oh my god it'd be so painful so painful and now if someone says you're fat i'd be like no shit sherlock like wow great observational skills and what like it doesn't hold that same weight excuse the pun um it doesn't have that same that same power anymore because i've you know been exposing myself to that fear of that judgment of people having about my fat body and so the more that you expose yourself to these things that you are um afraid of the you know the judgment around the easier it will get so to do that all right, and go to the show notes, fearsvalley.com forward slash 037, episode 37, or fearsvalley.com forward slash podcast, and get that juicy new resource that I have made for you, the Fierce Fatty Body Love Roadmap. So good. Inside it, you're going to get the three uh, simple steps to follow to increase your body confidence, the three massive mistakes everyone makes um, on this journey and how to avoid them. And you're going to get free body love training sent to your inbox. Yes, you're going to get some more of me. Don't you love it? You might be like, no, go away. But if you do, then yay. <laughs> and join my Facebook group, Fierce Fatty Friends. Link in the show notes. But you can also do Fierce Fatty Friends in Facebook. All right. Well, thank you for hanging out with me today. It's been amazing. Hope you've had fun. I've had fun. I've had the best time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I will uh, see you in the next episode. Have an incredible rest of your day, rest of your week, whatever you're up to. I will see you later. Crocodile in a while. Alligator. Bye, fatties. Okay, bye, 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 bye.